Hey folks, this is the Nazgul. In today's video, we will continue to talk about the secrets of the F-18 radar. For those who haven't seen it, there is a link above to the video where we started talking about them. Today I will show you the functions that you shared in the comments and that we need to talk about. The video won't be very long, but these functions are extremely important and useful during combat. I consider them a level above the functions mentioned in the previous video. So without wasting any more time, here we go. The first function we will see is the spot function. Note that if we want to direct the radar scan, we need to move the cursor and press TDC to press once. However, if we press TDC to press for a little more than one second, an X will appear on the cursor as well as the word spot at the bottom. From now on, when we move the cursor, the radar will follow it automatically. It is very useful when we want to keep an eye on a target in a specific region. It is very similar to the TWS auto function, but here the radar will be anchored to a specific geographical point. The TWS auto function anchors the radar to a specific aircraft. In the spot, if the target moves, it will be able to leave the scanning area. If we make a turn to the sides, you will see that the radar will be anchored. To disable this function, we can press TDC to press once. Another way is to press nose wheel steer or select one of the other screens using the sensor control switch. By doing this, the radar will return to scanning the region it was in before turning on the spot function. Even if we press TDC to press on a target, it will disable the function and will not apply the soft lock as we might think it would. In RWS mode, if we want to apply soft lock and track a target, we first have to point the radar at it, apply soft lock, and then enable the spot function. Trying to enable it over a target does not work. It is important to remember that this function also works in TWS mode. The big advantage is that TWS applies the soft lock automatically. One feature of the spot function is that it locks the scanning azimuth at 20 degrees, regardless of what we have selected. However, it still allows us to modify the number of bars. Moving on, another function that exists is the IFF interrogation. Press sensor control switch to press on the target to find out if the target is an ally or an enemy. Green is an ally, yellow is undetermined, and red is an enemy. Flying on multiplayer servers, if it turns yellow or red, you can consider it an enemy. If it is an ally, it will certainly turn green. But there is a way to make this automatic. Go to the TAC page and then to the azimuth elevation page. Here there is the auto interrogation function that we can enable so that the radar performs the IFF interrogation automatically. Now let's talk about PRF or pulse repetition frequency. We can choose between three options, high INTL and med. High is indicated when we want to detect targets at more than 25 nautical miles. Med is the opposite when we want to detect targets at less than 25 nautical miles. 
INTL alternates between high and med with each bar change. It is useful when we are in a scenario with several enemies approaching at different distances, very common in multiplayer servers. I usually use INTL because, as I said, on multiplayer servers, there are many aircraft at different distances. Another thing is that you don't have to worry so much about being precise in your selection. For example, here we have a fighter coming from less than 20 miles away and, even using high mode, we are able to locate it. A curious fact is that when we use STT mode, it automatically changes the PRF, regardless of the option we select. The next function we will talk about is the RAID. It's a zoom function, performing a fine scan to try to differentiate multiple targets that might be appearing as a single contact. It appears more explicitly in TWS mode. Another way to activate this function is by pressing the RAID FLIR FOV button. When multiple aircraft are flying close together, radar might detect them as a single target. RAID mode helps to distinguish these individual aircraft. In this example, we have a contact that appears to be more than one aircraft. When we activate the RAID function, we can see that there are actually four aircraft flying very close together. Additionally, the radar scan changes. It now scans a smaller area around the selected target and uses three bars. In the upper right corner and in the bra information, we have the distance to the target. In the bra information, we also have the direction of the target, which coincides with the position of the vertical line. At the top in the middle, we have our direction. Notice that it's a little strange. It keeps the target always in the middle of the screen so that we can keep a closer eye on it. Its direction will be indicated mainly by the position of the vertical line. A variation is the one look function. It focuses on the tracked aircraft, generating raw tracks of other aircraft most commonly used in STT mode. Although it does not appear explicitly in RWS mode, when activating STT mode, it is possible to use RAID mode by pressing RAID FLIR FOG. I personally have never used the RAID function. Share in the comments if you use it and find it useful. Welcome, folks, to everyone's favorite function, TWS Auto. Notice that we have a target being tracked ahead. When we start a turn, we point the nose of our aircraft in another direction, causing the target to leave the scanning area. If we don't want to lose the target, we need to redirect the radar antenna to the target location by moving the cursor and pressing TDC to press. However, doing this during a fight is extremely complicated, especially if the opponent is maneuvering and changing altitude. So to help us, we can activate the auto function. This way, the radar will follow the target, changing both the azimuth and altitude automatically. Note that if we move the cursor to the sides and press TDC to press, we still remain in auto mode, but we start scanning a little more to the side. We move the cursor without losing the main target. This is bias mode. However, if we want to scan other areas, we need to turn off the auto mode. This is a button that is worth having configured in our HOTAS system. This is because, as we can see, with the auto function on, we cannot manipulate the radar much, especially the scanning level. If we need to change it, we have to have a way to turn this function off quickly.
Another function that exists is set. It is present on the RWS screen and allows us to configure the radar in specific ways for each type of missile. For example, I will configure our radar for when we use the 120 with four bars, 60 degree azimuth, eight second track file, and a range of 80 nautical miles. To finish, press set. Now I'll switch to the sidewinder and select six bars, 20 degrees azimuth, four second track file, and a distance of 40 nautical miles. Note that now, when we change weapons, the radar will automatically change settings. Initially, it seems like a lot of work, but in combat, it makes a difference. The next secret uses the data link. Notice that we have three aircraft ahead. Accessing the TAC page and then the SA page, we have the data link screen. Now click on sensors and then on RWR. Now we can see three yellow triangles, which are repetitions of the contacts received by our RWR. Likewise, if we go back to the radar screen, we will see the same triangles on it, which makes our work easier during fights. Another tip is to make a waypoint appear on radar screen. Click twice to go to the support page and then to the HSI page. Here we will select to show the route as well as we will select waypoint one. The next step is to click on data and then on air to air waypoint. Returning to the radar screen, we will see something that looks like an arrow. This is our waypoint. The arrow indicates north. This function increases our situational awareness without having to look at another screen. Now I will show some examples flying in multiplayer. Here I will engage the target further to the right using the RWS mode combined with the spot function. Note that the radar remains in the position where the cursor is located. However, we have to change the level manually if the target goes up or down. When our missile enters pitbull mode, we can turn and walk away. Splash. This one is less than 20 miles at 33,000 feet. Let's use TWS auto mode. Fox 3. See that the cursor is stationary, but the radar is tracking the target, both azimuth and level. Starting pitbull mode, defending. Folks, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We also have a members club where you will have access to my Discord to answer your questions more directly, see my flights, and be able to suggest topics for new videos. This way, you can further strengthen the channel. In this example, we will engage two targets separately, also using auto mode. Fox 3. When the first missile switches to pitbull mode, we will have to deactivate auto mode to be able to move the antenna and select the second guy.
Turning off auto mode, pressing TDC depress to change the scan azimuth, soft lock, turning auto mode back on, and Fox 3. Splash work. Now we have three Su 25s ahead. Let's shoot all three using TWS. To select the target to shoot, use undesignate nose wheel steer. All missiles have activated pitbull mode. We can turn and watch. Most of the time, some of them escape, but most of the time, we take some down. Folks, many thanks to everyone. Your comments on the first video were extremely essential for this one. Thank you for your help and thank you for the community that you are. I also want to thank other YouTubers, guys I follow who help me a lot. I recommend that you follow these guys and that's why I'll put their channel links in the description. Don't forget to share your opinions and suggestions. You've seen that this is very important. Many thanks guys. See you in the next video. See ya.